All right, so been here before for a reach in on the video. Now we're gonna go for their walk-in freezer. Not good. That's not a real smart idea either. Oh, frozen up, sweet. All right, let's get started. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. So we're gonna have to get a ladder and see if we can get up there and get this thing melted out. All right, so we found the controller and the condenser that's dirty. It says DF over there on that controller. So maybe it's got a failed defrost. Let's see if the side glass is full. Appears to be. Looks like it's towards the dry mark. This has got that electronic stuff on there, which could be failing. And not a whole lot of room between that ceiling in there. Let's find out why it's not defrosting. Is it a heater? Is it a relay? Is it the controller? Is it the termination switch? Is it the suction transducer? What's causing it? Looking for some clues here. If you look at the water in the pan, it makes you think it's probably trying to defrost. Otherwise, how would you get water in there? So that makes me wonder if the compressor's sticking on, which makes me think, Control there may not be sensing uh, temperature correctly. Set for negative five. I think it's in defrost now and it's sticking on. That's what I think's going on. Go ahead and brush this coil off too. This thing's kind of dirty. Yeah, it's in there pretty decent. Maybe not. Coming over here to the other side, we've got 14 PSI. Not sure what it says on the other side, if it's just a duplicate or what. This is kind of a real great setup here. They uh, are limited on space, but man, it really makes it a real treat to work on it. Yeah, it was in defrost. Look at this. I can feel the heat on it. And you can see where it's melted the coil or melted the ice off. So it's melted it, but the fan's not shutting off. You can see water over there. And the fan's never shut down, so it's almost like a total failure on the defrost point. Yeah, apparently it's melting as soon as it hits it. So let's find out if the contactor's sticking or what's going on. We're gonna have to melt this. Oh, look at that, I just bumped it and the fan shut off. Makes you wonder, is that just a snap disc? It was making, not making. So we can see right here, the compressor and the fan are right here on this controller. It doesn't show a relay here on this. We've got two wires that come out of here. Come over to there, which goes into this box. This one might just control suction only. Let's see if this one has a set point. CN, cut in, 20 PSI. That out, it's hit seven. So all this is here is a pressure control. This one doesn't do anything. So the other one's gonna do all the work. Way to answer and I need to be. Went ahead and killed the breaker this thing. Got red, black, and blue, which I only have black and red there. Looks to me though, this little controller here must control the compressor. That would make sense. Yep, right there's compressor. So the relay's built into this thing. So they got this fancy, fancy little device there to shut the compressor down. So you end up buying a whole new controller. We're not gonna have this. So what you can do is you can put a low pressure switch on there and we can make it kick on and kick off with the low pressure switch, which is a whole lot more resilient than this little thing. I've done that before and then had to come back and switch it out later. The relay there looks like it's going to defrost heaters. That's more along the lines of what we got going on there. Um, that was pressure only. This one's gonna control. That control right there is your temperature control. Comes down on those two wires there. Can't see it. That looks like compressor. So this is the one that's sticking. 
That little gizmo there. That's also your defrost clock too. That's what sucks. Yeah, so you just yank a thermostat out and it's not gonna defrost. So now you're adding a defrost clock to it. All right, so it's taking some ingenuity here, but what we're gonna do, I've unhooked the compressor wire coming out of the controller and hook the uh, evaporator fans from the motor or from the controller. We're gonna run this to a two pole, two pole contactor. We're gonna power the two pole contactors coil off of the 230 volt defrost heaters. And so when they're energized, it's gonna kill power to the compressor and kill power to the fan. It's generic, it should work. Now, obviously the thermostat's not working, so I could wire one of those in, but it only has to work for a day or two until we get the other part and then we can reverse it back the way it was. So that's what we're gonna do. There's no room up here, so I'm not really gonna show you how I did it. Plus it's really not something I recommend unless you really know what you're doing. What I ended up doing is I got a 230 volt coil contactor, two pole. Took the two poles, uh, two power lines off the controller there. One's a fan on one side, compressors on the other side. Brought it through there. That's not gonna work. Okay, so what I ended up doing was for the coil voltage, which is 230 volts on the contactor there, it's on the normally open and common side of the relay with the high voltage. So when a switch is open, you should have the potential of 230 volts. When it closes, it's gonna collapse that, which then will break power to the contactor coil. So it's gonna be powered shut, allowing the power to go through like it was before the relay was in there. And then when the relay is energized, that open switch, which has potential on both sides of the switch, is going to become one solid wire, so to speak, for demonstration or example purposes. And that's gonna cause this to then break power to the coil and then break power, high voltage to the compressor. Kind of confusing if you don't think about it, but yeah, it's, pretty simple. Uh, got it mounted in here. It's gonna be inside the box, so we don't have to worry about it getting shorted out or anything like that. Uh, this is temporary just for a day or two until we get the part. So now we gotta melt that coil. Or I end up melting that ice and making it warm in there, and then I'm going to defrost. I'm gonna test it out first, make sure it works. So we can see the fans running there, and the fans are running in there. Let's put this thing into a defrost and see if they shut down. Make sure nothing's gonna short out, everything's insulated. Okay, let's hit the defrost button. Look at that, compressor shot off. Not bad for an amateur YouTuber. Good deal. You can kind of see some steam here and there. Yeah, so you get that backside. That heater's gotta melt all the way through it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this thing do its natural thing. And then we'll get the pump sprayer out. Get most of the work done for me. You can see the water's already accumulating. I don't want to pump more water into that than we already got, because then we're going to overflow. So we're going to let it do just bare bone minimums. Let's let it run. All right, so got a pan catching here, a pan catching there. All that stuff fell, most of it, all fell off the coil. Actually, the whole it fell off except for the one edge corner. I got a little bit at the back too that might fall. Um, wiped up this floor. So I gotta get some rags and wipe that all up because you don't want that to freeze in here. That worked out better than normal just because the extra water, like I said, would have filled up that pan and it would have went potentially all over the place. Well, it hasn't kicked on yet. It's still running. Yeah, it's still burning up. Let's see if we can scrape some of that crap off. Trap that heat over there on that side. Let's see if we can peel this off. Yep, we're good, we can peel this off. There's your defrost termination limit switch over there. Fans feel good, that's good. This little gizmo here is made for scraping gaskets and stuff like that. I got the razor blade flipped around to the back side. Should be able to go right down get some of that off. I'm not hurting the coil none. It's definitely thicker at the bottom. We'll melt the rest of it off with we'll oh, just kicked out. Uh, that's a great. 
Let's go ahead and turn the breaker off. Just like I worried about, I got water everywhere, so I'm gonna go grab my vacuum and get that sucked out of there. Otherwise, it's gonna freeze in between the ceiling and leak down. Thirty-eight area, it's dropping. I took that top shelf off, threw it up here. They don't need to be blocking the exit of the uh, cool air coming out. Okay, what I want to do, because it didn't bring on the compressor right away, it just brought on the evaporator. I'm going to throw it into another defrost and see if it kicks out normal and if the compressor will start back up. Because the last thing I want to know is an hour from now, or two, four hours, whatever, that uh, this thing doesn't run like it's supposed to. Let's try one more time. Yep, it did it. It shouldn't run for very long. Let me see where we got the wires and stuff all kind of well below the top of that so nothing's going to get into it and then we put the cover over it'll be all safe good enough to get them by otherwise what do you do you got to get another mobile cooler up here freezer up here and we just used ours over the weekend for another emergency we've got two of them and they're both used up okay get these pans out of here now i think our dripping's all good for now a little bit back here in the back oh good grief all right, so it kicks out a defrost. Contactor pulls in, which means this should be getting power, but it's not. I don't know what system is on that. I don't know if I should just wire it hot and all the time or not. I mean, when I turn the power off and back on again, it came right on. So I don't know if there's a delay in the compressor, but not in the evaporator. That seems pretty, pretty fishy. Uh, there should be a delay even in the fan, but obviously it's not coming on right. I did match them up left and right to the right one, as far as I know. Yep, there it goes. All right, good. It must be, a, I don't know, there must be a delay there. The very first one's a fan. So it comes down, goes to there, and goes to that. So that's the fan, that's correct. The compressor's number two, number two comes down, and then goes down to there. So there is a time delay in this thing here, because um, this, not only does it come out of here, but then it also comes to this, and this is the low pressure cutout, which I think is all it's doing is low pressure cutting out. It's not, I don't know why you'd even need the low pressure cutout, honestly, because it doesn't have a solenoid to pump down. So what's the point? Why not just have a low pressure switch? I mean, other than just monitoring the suction pressure, which is just one more thing to go wrong. Side glass is full, which is nice. Got that pan down low enough that the water should boil off. Well, we're gonna watch this for a little bit, make sure it gets down to temperature. We'll put those panels back up there and we might call it a day. All right, guys, we are back. Look at what I got. Got me a little Dixel here. A little Dixel control, that's right. So let's get this back in there and see if this thing works. Let's see how well my remedy worked at getting the uh, coil from freezing up again. Cool. Looks like it must have worked. Look at that. Looks all clean to me. Cookies are frozen. Yay. Let's get this thing changed. Okay, walk-in freezer. Boom. There's no solenoid to pump it down, so it don't really matter whether you just turn it off or not. You can see we've got the water in the pan there. So it did melt it out like it should. What we're going to do is we're still going to utilize this uh, contactor to kill the compressor. So the controller is going to control the contactor like it should have been done to begin with, similar to how they're doing the defrost relay there for the heaters. That way it lasts longer. All right, so we've got the orange wire coming off what would be the compressor right there. That wire is coming over here and going to my contactor's coil. The opposite side of power going in there is coming off of the terminal strip over here. That's going to the other side of my coil. Then the power for the compressor is getting its power from the same place the comp uh, controller is getting it from. Passing through the contactor, 
going then on down to the compressor. Basically, it's just an isolation. It's going to take, instead of the amperage going through the little lightweight contacts inside the controller, they are going to go through, uh, they're just going to control the coil voltage, which is still 240 volt, but there's no amperage behind it. It's just going to control the contactor. And we got everything ran through, a little loopy doop there, which I've got to get this other one up here and through one of the eyelets here, and then we'll mount this thing inside this box, put the cover back on, and everything will be good. Uh, I did hook the fan back up to the original spot. The fans are not rated for a whole lot, as you can see right there. Maximum current on this thing is 16 amps, 5 amps for the fan, which leaves you, what, about 11 amps for the compressor. That's why I don't like that. Rated load amps is eight. I mean, yeah, it's minimum circuitry 11. So, I mean, it's a smaller compressor, but still, it's gonna make it last longer. It's cheap cheap insurance. There's a short in the compressor, which this compressor was replaced, I don't know how long ago. Uh, I think two years ago. This is going to take care of any shorts. It's gonna burn up a 20 some dollar contactor versus several hundred dollars controller. We've got her mounted down there in the bottom with two screws. All the wires are clean and clear away from all the metal. Everything's ran through the eyelets. Everything's back to the same. We're going to mark in here what we did on the... Let's go ahead. It's kind of hard to see here, but so number one here was power going to the controller. So opposite of that would be two. That is going to be what comes down and goes over to the coil. The one coil gets powered off the side of the compressor. So that's your coil. It's really in there's your normally open switch. That's the isolation contactor. There you go. Simple as that. Most people will figure that out without the wiring. Go in and just did it just to be safe uh, in case of somebody that uh, doesn't have as much experience. Got the cover on. I'm going to leave them a note here. I'm going to leave this other controller here. It's good enough to get them by if this one would take a complete crap. What I did, how I did it. And then uh, on the other side, it's got the instructions on programming it, which I gotta double check, make sure all that stuff's correct. Compressor's running. All right, she's running with her defrost terminated like it should. We'll throw all this back inside the bag and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, guys, that wraps this one up. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. Until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.